Hey, what's, what's going, going on, everybody? everybody? Oh, oh my god, god it's, it's been, been forever. forever. I, I don't, don't even. I don't remember how to stream. <laughs> um, uh, we're, we're here. here. We're here, and we're we're, we're doing, doing awesome. awesome. We're, we're alive, alive and well. Um, I'm, I'm not, not even gonna lie to you guys. I, I totally, totally forgot, forgot to like do all the lighting stuff, stuff before it before the um before the stream started. I was like. Wait, wait, something, something feels, feels off about what we're doing here. here. And then I looked, I'm, I'm like, wait, wait a minute. minute, none of the lights are on. <laughs> and I was in the waiting room, and I'm like gathering all the things for the stream. Oh. <laughs> Literally don't remember how to stream anymore. Um, but we're back. From New York Comic Con, um, I know that I said I was going to stream last Tuesday and last Wednesday. Unfortunately, that did not happen because Tuesday, truth be told, I was just getting ready for the weekend that was about to happen. And obviously, I told you guys Wednesday I wasn't going to be streaming because I'm going to be packing and shit like that. Um, and that's exactly what I did. And then Thursday, we went to Comic Con. Friday, we were just chilling. At Comic Con Saturday, same thing. Uh, same with Sunday, and then yesterday I got back around 1, 2 p.m. and I'm off from work, so I did not. I didn't. I didn't stream because I was just like, I do. I just want to chill, you know. Uh, and then we're, it's Tuesday again, and we're here, and we are not streaming. I mean, we are streaming. You see what I mean? I forgot how to stream. I don't know how to speak even. Um, but, I'm really excited to be back. Uh, in terms of games, I know re I still haven't really decided what, what kind of games we're playing today. I know today is Terrifying Tuesday. Uh, so, I do, I do remember I wanted to play some Fortnite. Um, and, probably, I mean, I did, I'm gonna look through my, through my, my Steam and see what we could play. I know we could play some Dead by Daylight, which would be really cool, but I know the, that I do, don't have anybody that's online right now, so. Um, but, other than that, um, I want to say I, I totally forgot to, again, I forgot how to stream. x one welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, and, uh, to all my mods and anyone that is online right now, thank you so much for joining as well. Um, so today I'm just gonna kind of go over how New York Comic Con went, um, and also talk about the stuff I got, and, uh, then we'll watch some creepy videos, uh, from Nick Crowley, uh, and then we're gonna, we're gonna play some games. Um, we started a little early so that even though the, the sun is, is gone, we started early, uh, just so that, you know, the lights outside of my room are still on by the time that, um... By the time we're done. So, um, without further ado. So, how did Comic-Con go? I, in a word, would say it actually went really great. Um, you know, I could show off a bunch of photos right now of how it went. But what I will say is that we did actually end up meeting the Trash Taste guys. Like I said, we would. So, I'll actually go ahead and show that photo off. Um... That was really cool. Um, let me see. So we did actually get to... Wow, you got... You know, I'm gonna just show it on Google Photos. This is not... <laughs> I'm like over here like, yeah, guys, let me just... Let me just show you this really lit up version of this... Of this picture. Thanks. Um, alright, I'm just gonna... I just wanna make sure I don't like like do something weird here okay um all right cool Um, so the, this photo, my, my camera's been having a lot of issues. I think it's, it, it is going to be time for me to start like, <laughs> like upgrade, thinking about upgrading my camera, but I did meet the trash chase guys. This is a lot better of a photo, honestly. 
um, you get to see kind of uh, everything. And yes, I did go as Bob the Builder, like I said. Um, again, these my fo my camera was having issues, and and I was on a long line, so I couldn't really like ask them, "Can you take another photo?" Um, and they were busy, so I did get a couple of really good photos of me with the Trash Taste dudes. Um, and I was very happy. I went to their Q and A also, which was also really fun. So again, very very exciting. Um, I don't know what the hell happened with my with my camera, but it's not producing photos like I want to. See? This is what I mean. It literally looks so bad. Uh, but this is me with Stella Chew. But then we got a the best the better photo. This is literally a way better photo. And I'm so thankful that that I have my um my editor and, and good friend Eddie were there with me, uh, with Stella Chew, so he was able to capture his much better photo after he realized there was an issue. Um, but we able, we were, and she's actually streaming right now, <laughs> and I was able to talk a little bit, but, um, she did do the Cabadon on me, the Cabadon challenge with me, uh, and that video will eventually come out on the, um, I, I'm thinking we're probably gonna put, we're gonna, we're gonna have to put it up on the Royal Renzo TTV TikTok and Instagram, but we're also gonna put it up on the, uh, LCAP photo page, uh, on TikTok and Instagram, so you guys can take a look at that. Um, and it's gonna be very fun. Um, I don't have the video as of yet. Right now, I know Eddie has it, so he will definitely, uh, show that to me. I'm trying to think, do I have any other photos that I want to show? Um, oh, me and Ray did actually meet Steve. Steve from Blue's Clues. Um, I do have a print of this, uh, actually, so I will be able to, like, you know, I, you know, display it proudly. I did meet a couple others, but this one was our, like, professional photo with him. I also got my handy-dandy notebook signed by him. Um, but it was, it was just a really good moment. I had a good time. Uh, Steve is the GOAT, honestly, and we went to his panel, and that was, he was just a really, he was just an awesome dude. Um, Eric and I went to the Genshin Impact panel. Um... I mean the Genshin Impact uh, booth, so you got to see us here at the Genshin Impact booth, just chilling. Um, again, you can see the issues with the camera; is not really the best, um, but it's something. Um, this was my mood all weekend. I was literally dead. Like Thursday came, I wasn't in cosplay, but even by the end of Thursday, I was just tired, exhausted. And then Friday came and I was in cosplay. I had the camera, which weighs like maybe 10 pounds on its own and dead. Just couldn't do it. So this was Saturday. This was taken on Saturday. Thanks, Bixby. <laughs> um, I was dead. This was Saturday and I'm like, I still have so much time before the convention ends. And I was just laying down in the fucking like floor. Um, I think this was right before we, we, wait, this was 717, so yeah, we were getting ready for the Steve panel at this time. Um, it was just, it was something, guys. Oh, it's not like that does anything. This is, uh, a video of, like, when Steve came on during the panel. Steve! 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 Yeah, you can see him right there. I will say this, I, my voice is also just gone. Like, I literally can't do it anymore. My, my voice is gone. Um, and my wisdom teeth are, like, coming out and it, it feels like shit. <laughs> so I'm just like, man, I really don't know how I'm going to get through these weeks. But I'm gonna have to push through because this is just, this is so, this is so bad. Um, so, and, and there's actually more, so... Um, Isaac got a chance to ask a question to Steve. <laughs> this, this was so fun. He, Steve goes up to, like, he sees Isaac, who is cosplaying as Jesus, by the way. And he says, he says to him, are you cosplaying the Lord? <laughs> and then he just goes on and he, and like, he's like, very cool. But hold on, I'll play this. Pretty awesome, man. He's pretty awesome, man. Thank you. Well, the 
so tired? <laughs> he thought he thought the question is why am I so tired? <laughs> and I was like, oh no, Isaac, don't. But I knew what he said. He's like, what what gets you inspired? Why are you still inspired? Oh, oh, I get inspired. I live in upstate New York, uh, in a very beautiful part of the Catskill Mountains, and I'm inspired every day by... He lives in Delhi, New York, uh, which we passed on our way to our really cool road trip to Montreal, which was very fun. And he said that he he is, is inspired by nature, so he you know he lives in the Catskills, which is really cool, honestly. Like I I am very that that is so awesome. Um, like, I like the fact that he's still in New York, he's still around the area. Uh, the tribe is probably shitty, but, you know, I'm at least glad that he is, you know, enjoying his time still here. Okay. Alright. He asked for a shout-out. Hi, out. the Lord's family. <laughs> Thank you for Jesus. <laughs> Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. He said, Hi, the Lord's family. Thank you for Jesus. <laughs> Amazing. And you can hear my voice is gone. Like when it when this video came on, you can hear it's just gone. And then, you know, the day went on and we you know, we ate really cool food. Um we were at Abiko, one of my favorite spots to visit in K Town. Uh I got the extra side of um croquettes because they taste so amazing in the curry. Um, again, another moment where my camera decides to work, and then at every other point in the process just does not want to work. And then, it was funny because as we were sitting down, we I get this, uh, this notification from New York Comic Con saying, Ugh, I miss you already with three hearts. And I said, nah, bro, this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it. And then this was Monday, but I was just testing out my camera to see if it was working, but some mask um but yeah that's kind of the the extent of the photos um but i do want to show off um yeah no isaac is jesus christ welcome to the stream caesar um he actually cosplayed as jesus all weekend and it was very interesting um again we so this is kind of a, a meme from last year so last year we did the same exact thing i was bob Ray was Steve and Isaac was um, Isaac was uh, Jesus and we just got the same the same reactions this year less people stopped me this year which I was thankful for because I just I like it, it interrupts my process too but I get it like somebody's cosplaying as Bob you want like no one cosplays as Bob the Builder anyways so we still got the same Steve Bob Oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> and it was just so funny because it happened way too often. It was like, it was literally the funniest thing ever. It's like, oh my god, Steve from Blue's Clues, Bob the Builder, are you Jesus? The trifecta of wholesomeness is here. And I'm just like, no, stop. <laughs> this is so funny. It was so good. Um, again, we got those reactions this year, but not quite as much as last year. But, um,. It's fine. I didn't want to be stopped anyways because I'm just, I'm trying to get these photos. Like, that. that's my biggest, like, my biggest thing is that I needed these photos uh, for the company. So, I'll show off some more stuff that I got. This is my, my bag of stuff is right here. I'm not picking it up. It's heavy. Um, but I was finally able to add some signatures to some posters. I was able to add my signature to the Sailor Moon poster, and my signature, one signature to the Sailor Moon poster, this one is, is over here, is Robbie Damon as Tuxedo Mask, because he played Tuxedo Mask, uh, and a bunch of other characters, but I really only care for the Tuxedo Mask, so he was able to add his, his signature there, uh, funny story about that, I was um, online on Thursday, like that was one of the first things I did, but he had to go to another thing, but I also had to go to another thing, so I couldn't, I couldn't wait. So I just, I left. He gave us a little post that he said, come back whenever you can skip the line. Um, so I came back the next day and then he had a huge ass line and I'm like, oh my God, everyone's going to hate me. So I did. And I said, Hey, can I, and I showed him the post. Can I, can I come through? <laughs> and he was like, 
he, he felt bad, but at the same time, he's like, okay, okay. So he put me somewhere online. I let a couple people go in front of me, and then I went, and all I wanted was a signature. I didn't want a picture. I just wanted the signature. So I didn't really care, you know? Um, like, that, like, and I, I was going as, as, like, quickly as possible. And he said, we'll start you off right. He put it, put that signature there. I'm so excited. Now time to start collecting the rest of them. That's going to be interesting. And then the fairy tale poster, I was able to add a couple new signatures to it. I, was, I, I did miss a chance to get Chris Sabat's uh, signature on here, but not to any fault of my own. Uh, actually, no, it is my fault. <laughs> um, I fucked up by putting the wrong, uh, the wrong option. I'll tell you more about it in a second. So this year, this one is from uh, 2019, I believe. Like this is this is from the first anime NYC that we went to. So this poster has been with me for the longest time, uh, as I'm trying to like get, um, you know, get these autographs and stuff. Um, and then, uh, so we did get the voice actress for Urza, Colleen Clickenbeard. She did actually give her um, her autograph right on top of Urza, which is where exactly where I wanted. And then we also met. Let's see if you got. We met. Um, I forgot what what his name was. Um, shoot, I forget his name. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna say, okay, now I remember. Um. Ray Chase. Ray Chase is the voice actor for Zash Kane, but he did a bunch of other... He's Noctis in Final Fantasy. Um, he... I mean, he did a lot of voices. But because he wasn't on the poster, but I loved his voice in the Dragon Cry movie. He was Zash Kane in the Dragon Cry movie. He did add his signature here. He said, I don't see him on this poster. And I said, that's totally fine. I just want you on, this, on the poster. So he did add it right there in the corner. And that was really fun. Um... So, very much looking forward to adding some more to this. Um, you know. That poster is literally the GOAT. It's such a good poster because it has every, pretty much for the most part, everyone's on there. Um, so, like I told you guys earlier, I did meet... Uh, the Trash Taste Boys, and I was online for the Trash Taste line, and I was like, okay, great, uh, but, you know, I didn't have anything for them to sign. And I was like, I don't want to get my badge signed either, like, I don't, I don't like that, you know? I feel like you get your badge signed when you are just not prepared. You don't have anything. And so I had some money, and I said, all right, I'll buy a print. But they didn't have prints with all three of them on there. So I'm like, oh, no way. So I saw that other people were also facing the same issue. So they ended up just buying, like, one print of somebody. And it was usually Connor's Sea uh, Dog VA. And having all three of them sign it. And I felt this is so weird to me, honestly. Because I'm like, I wonder how they feel about signing Connor's, like, picture. So they did. <laughs> all three of them signed it. And I felt so bad, and I was like, ah. but you know, the thing is, on the when on the reservation, it said they will be provide like prints will be provided to you, and so they will be able they will provide you the items to sign. And I was like, oh, that's great. So they'll have something for me to sign. They did not, and I was like, oh, and I paid thirty dollars for just one print. It's a good print, and I got all three signatures. Like it's fine. It happened. It was. It's. It's good. If I had, if I decided that I, like, I still had other priorities for the weekend, but if I didn't, I would have just went with just getting one print of each person and have each one of them sign their own print. Like, that would have been the best thing to do, but it didn't happen that way. And, you know, I'm thankful I got a chance to do it. I got the picture. That was actually the most important part was getting the picture, even though it was a little blurry. Getting this was just kind of an extra. So I'm happy about this, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to add it to the autograph collection. Um, so I did bring the Spider-Man bag with me. Um, there's not too much stuff here, but, um, this one is actually really cool. Um, I, I know Caesar, you'll, you'll particularly, you might actually really like this one. Um, so when we, so I did actually get a chance to meet, um, Chris Sabat, and this is the picture of me and Eric with Chris Sabat. 
For those of you that don't know, Chris Sabat is the voice of Piccolo, uh, Vegeta, um, Zoro, and All Might. So it was a very cool, um, it was a very cool thing to have, honestly. Um, but yeah, we actually did, and so that's that's a really cool photo. Um, I'm just like trying to figure out places where to put my stuff because it's gonna be everywhere. Um, we got this photo of me at, with Justin Bre Briner, who is the, um, the voice of, uh, Deku. Um, and, you know, a bunch of other voices, but, you know, the reason I actually got him was, again, not related to my hero at all. I got him his picture, and same thing with Chris Sabat. I got Chris Sabat's picture not because of Vegeta, not because of Piccolo, or All Might, or Zoro. It was because Chris Sabat voices um, Elfman in Fairy Tale, and I thought that if I bought the photo op, I would get an autograph. That was not the case, and I should have known better because, of course, they're not gonna sell a photo with an autograph, you dummy. Um, and it didn't happen, so that actually was kind of kind of shit. <laughs> so I, I got kind of shit out of luck, and the line to meet Chris Sabat and Justin Briner was long as fuck. It's not, it wasn't gonna happen. Not today. Not yesterday. So I just said I'm I'm good. I'm okay. I, I uh, next time. I'm really hoping he goes to Anime NYC, both of them, because I do want to want a chance to meet them again and actually just focus on the autograph this time. Um, but yeah, so there's that photo of me with Justin Briner. Oh yeah, Justin Briner voices Zaref. He's one of the doubles for Zaref in um, in uh, Fairy Tale, which is why I, I wanted to get that that autograph because Zaref is actually on that poster. And same with Elfman, he's actually on that poster. So I'm so sad I couldn't add those to my collection. But what I do understand is that Chris Sabat always returns, like pretty much to every Comic Con and ever. And he's been to Anime NYC in the past, so I'm so hoping he goes back. Uh, and then this is a picture of me and Eric with Colleen Clickenbeard, who again, as as I told you, is the voice of Urza. Now, what had happened was, I only bought the photo up with, with Colleen. And I noticed she didn't have a line. So I just went up to the line and I said, Hey, uh, you know, I bought a photo up, but I, I wanted just the autograph. Would you be able to help me? And she said, Well, actually, you need to go process the photo op cancellation with the, uh, with, with the Epic Photo Ops people. And I was like, That's so much work. And knowing that Urza is such a big character in Fairy Tale, I said, I, I will, this is the one time I'll put this aside and I'll go ahead and, and just get this out of the way, you know? So I did, and I was happy that I did. Um, and I'm glad that I did get that out of the way as well. Um, but I am hoping that I will be able to get Chris Sabat's autograph at some point. Um, again, really good photo. Uh, definitely want to put that up at some point, somewhere in the room. And then again, as I told you guys, this one I actually did put it in the protective cover. It's just me with uh, with me and Ray with with Steve. This is a very good, very good photo. Ah, put these all together. Um, was there more? St oh yeah, <laughs> I I still have some more stuff. Um, this is gonna go on for quite a bit. I'm sorry, guys. If you don't, um, you know, uh, we will get to the games eventually, but. So I did, like I said, get my handy-dandy notebook signed. But like I said, you saw that picture. I was dressed up as Bob when I went to go meet Steve. Um, and you know what he says to me as Ray and I go up? He's like, oh, competition, huh? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> this is exactly how I knew it would play out. And... We go up to we go up to uh, Steve, and I have my handy dandy notebook, and he's like, "Give me that," <laughs> and I'm just like, "Yeah, this makes sense. He's the one that should have the handy dandy notebook." So he takes my handy dandy notebook, he christens it pretty much, and he's like that, and and then I'm the one with the hammer, and Ray also has his handy dandy notebook, which is way better than mine. Um, but when I go in the autograph line right after, which was not as long as I thought because I was t closer to the front, he did actually sign it, and so I'm really happy about that. This is going in the collection, for sure, for sure. Really cool collection, honestly. 
Um, this collection's growing, and I love that, that this is something that I collect. Um, you know, memorabilia is just always really cool to have, especially if it's autographed. Now, I get to add these back to my collection. Um, I, I Like, one of them is new to the collection, but one of them is not new. So, um, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of the Goosebumps series, especially uh, Hyper uh, Horrorland is one of my favorites. Um, so, I, I was planning to go meet R.L. Sign, but the line was so long because it was a free autograph session. You know, it, it's just impossible. Unless you're there like an hour early, you're just, n it's never going to happen, you know? And I think at that time, I was online for, what was I online for? I was online for Steve at that time. So, it just, it just wasn't going to happen. And I had other things to do that day, so I just said, R.L. Stein comes back every year for the most part. He was there last year and the year pro and whenever they did Comic-Con prior to that. So I'm going to assume that eventually he's going to come back and that'll be the day. That'll be the time. So I was not able to get this autograph, but I do want it autographed because this is my favorite Goosebumps book ever. But while I was there, I did pick up Slappy World number one. Because I do want to actually read it. I'm a big Slappy fan. Um, so I do want to read that. And last week, uh, after after Monday's stream, I actually did... I don't know if I told you guys. I got the 1993 version of Goosebumps. Um, Night of the Living Dummy. My intention, like I said, was to get it autographed by, by the illustrator and R.L. Stein. But I was only able to get an autograph by the illustrator, which is still great. Like, admittedly, that's still awesome because he is the original illustrator of this cover and of Slappy. And, like, he even when he walked up to his booth, he had the just a giant photo of, of Slappy. This giant photo of Slappy. And I'm just like, he was like, you got something for me to sign? I said, I have, you got a book for me to sign? I said, I have the book for you to sign. And he signed this one. This is, again, the original 1993 version of this book. So I was really happy that I got the copy. It was only like 7 bucks on Amazon. Uh, and it is original. And I was able to get it uh, autographed by the illustrator. So that was really fun. Uh, so really happy to add or re-add these books to the collection. I gotta clean. My room is just a mess. Like, just re realistically, my room has not been clean and like couple months uh i mean when i started streaming i cleaned it up a bit but ever since i did the um the playstation classic modding i've just my brain has just been rot and i can't i've not been able to um recover from that um this was my badge for the weekend um I'm, i was very sad i did not get the spy x family badge but that's fine that was only the saturday badge anyways but you know uh, one of the the interviews that we did over the weekend, uh, he actually gave us one of these trick or treat packs of Pokemon. Um, and so you know, you guys know I do actually dabble in, in collecting Pokemon cards. Um, so what we got was a Gorgeist, um, uh, a Litwick, and a Ghastly. So these are special Halloween versions of these cards. You know, they have this, uh, the, I got the Hollow for, uh, Gorgeist. Very cool. Uh, I like this a lot. Um, obviously I will put it in a, uh, a, you know, I'll put it inside of a little, whatever they're called, uh, card sleeve. Eventually might get it graded or something. I do want to pick up one of these trick-or-treat, like, bags before Halloween, and maybe I'll open it on stream. Um, but, because they, they actually look really cool, so I don't know what cards are in them, to be honest. Um. Oi. They. Um. I don't think there was really much more in here that I, I have to show you. We got some one-piece red napkins. Um. We got this, like, the Rescue Rabbit hat that I can wear on my head. Um, I did not get the Rescue Rabbit plush from the from the booth. That that Rescue Rabbit is going for $600 on eBay, according to Ray. So, you know, it, it, it was a gotcha. And I, you know what I got? I got, um, I got a notepad. That's what I got. 
I do know one person, literally as I was going to collect my notepad, who actually did get the Rescue Rabbit plush. It was very cool. Um, but I was able to get this, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, mat. This is a really cool mat. It's an official mat, Konami mat. Um, I'll open it up for you guys on stream, actually. This one, it was a con exclusive, so they're not selling it anywhere else. Um, she is, in fact, beautiful. We got this on Thursday when there was no line. Again, Thursday is probably the best day when you want to do something like you want to make sure you get the things that you want and make sure they don't sell out. So, got this really cool mat. It's a very cool mat. I love this mat. Um, I know Ray was messaging me about it. He was going crazy about it when it first came out or when the news first came out. Um, and so when I first entered the convention on Thursday, he had somewhere to go. And I immediately said, hey, Ray, uh, you know, I got the... Um, I got the mat if you you know if you want it he's like where 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 <laughs> and he went to go as soon as we were there me and uh, Eric were there we he went and he got it uh, as well so really cool mat you know you can also use them as mouse pads if you want um, but it is in addition to this other mouse pad this other dual mat that I have this one's actually one of my favorite dual mats that I have uh, it is the magician girls um, dual mat I believe this one is also an official an official one but I, I'm not actually sure about that to be honest but I do really like this mat also um, you know if you are into Yu-Gi-Oh it is a really cool thing to own um, they are art pieces too you know you can technically get them framed and um, you know they're really cool to have um I got some posters. Uh, one of them is a Sandman poster. I got a Genshin poster and some a Chainsaw Man poster and stuff like that. I don't want to take them out because this is going to be kind of rough to take out. So I'm just going to put them away. I just want you to believe me that of what they are. <laughs> um, you know, again, I have all my, like, I collect all my posters, like, in this one area of my room. Like, they have a little corner. Um, I got, this one was actually from, so... The entire one of the memes from the entire weekend was that I wanted the fucking adult Happy Meals. Um, like, and I, I was gonna eat a bunch of adult Happy Meals this weekend, you know, not to become fat, fat, but because I wanted the toys. So, as you guys can see, let me see if I could do it right. I got Grimace, he's right here. I don't know if I showed off last time I streamed, but um, yeah, I got Grimace. Actually, no, I didn't stream that day. I think it was October 2nd that I, I did, um, because I got it on October 3rd. No, I did. I did stream that day. So I, I think I did show it off. But um, Eric actually ended up giving me this. Uh, what had happened was I ordered my Happy Meal. And Ray, I mean, sorry, Eric got, got this. And I got another Grimace. So I gave my Grimace to Ray. Uh, Sarika, Isaac's girlfriend, also got Grimace too. And Isaac got Birdie. Um... And so, between the three of us, we'd have gotten three out of the four, um, four figures. Um, I have not, like, I've seen people get Cactus Buddy. I, at the, before this, I hadn't seen anyone get Hamburglar, and I hadn't seen anyone get Birdie. So, this so my first time seeing them. I've seen people get Cactus Buddy, and I've seen people get, um, Grimace a lot. So, happy to add another to the collection. Eventually, I'll get the other two, but I do want to finish that collection at some point. Very cool toys to have. But turns out they're like sold out everywhere now, so they're not offering the adult Happy Meal anymore. They're out of boxes, they're out of toys, so they're ending the promotions this week for any store that still has them, which is very little. Not too many store ha actually do have them still, so it is what it is. Um, I got this Nezuko, adding yet another Nezuko to my pile of Nezukos in that corner over there. I do have, I think, I forget how many Nezukos I do have at this point, but, and I do have some Nezukos, like, down here and up, actually, I don't have Nezukos up here, but there's, there's a couple Nezukos down here, but yes, I do get to add another Nezuko to the collection. Um, speaking of adding more stuff to the collection, 
Um, I did get another Miku figure. This one sits. It sits on a, on the ledge, so I will be making her sit on this ledge over here. Um, this is a Sakura Miku, so it's not just any Miku. It's a Sakura Miku. Um, this one was only like 18 bucks, so like it wasn't like crazy priced either. Um, so I saw it and I was like, I definitely need this. But sad part is I was not able to find the other two like uh, Mikus that are um, or Nezukos that I really wanted from this uh, time. So there were two chubby collection Mikus, and one of those uh, I forgot what it was called. Let me see if I can find the name. Um. It was called a uh, Hikake figure. Um, I'll just show you guys a picture, actually. Um, so this one was the Nezuko that I really wanted. Um, so I couldn't find this at all. Like they had all the other characters, but they didn't have any of the Nezukos. And I looked hard. Oh. And these were the two Chubby Collection uh, Mikus I really wanted. I couldn't find either of them. But I did see them on Amazon, so they do exist, But uh, and I might just pick them up there so I don't disappoint myself next time, and I can just keep them off the list so that next time we go to Anime NYC, I can just focus on other things. Um, also, I did want to mention, your boy, <laughs> LCAP Photo NYC, and, um, and uh, the Ramen Pack did get influencer and press badges to Comic-Con, I mean, to, sorry, to Anime NYC this year. So, first time, I mean, you know, we got them for Castle Point, but this was the first time that, for a major convention, the LCAP actually ended up getting passes, like, like press passes. So, we're very proud of our team, very proud of, of, um, of us. So, you know, very exciting news to come out of, uh, come out of this convention, honestly. Um... All right, let's just take this out. So, you know, we'll be able to, to kind of get in through a different entrance, which is great. <laughs> um, so I don't have to wait on a shitty line, and I can get be there first on the show floor to grab all the stuff that I wanted on day one. I'm going to definitely grab some of uh, the Iron Mouse uh, hoodie and stuff from Senpai Squad because I said I was going to do it, and now I can. Oh, yeah, you know, I accidentally opened the box in the wrong direction. I opened it from the bottom, and actually, there's a lot of detail under there, so I'm just not gonna look. But, you know, uh, good to know that these figures are, like, you know, there there's uh, there are figures. They're, they, they put a lot of, of work into them. So, yeah, this is the Miku. It is a really cool Miku. Sakura Miku. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna possibly display her on here. This is hard, guys. I don't know how to do this. I guess this is a... This is hard. I think I'm just gonna... Yeah, I think that's what's gonna have to, have to happen for now. I don't know how they made that happen, but, like, that's definitely gonna fall. That's gonna fall over. So I'm gonna just put her really close to the ground so that she doesn't fall in and I don't lose her. That's hard, too. Hmm. All right, for now, I really don't know, but, um, can't even see her. That's tough. That's hard. Um, yes, right here. So I, I see her. She's like right in front of me. <laughs> I don't know. That's so weird. I wish you guys can see. Actually, well, well. I'll take a picture and you guys can see it. Um, that's so weird. Oh, this one, it, it, I know it's not loaded yet on, onto my phone, so I can't really like, there we go. See, that's what I'm gonna do for now. I'm gonna just keep it like that for a bit. Eventually, I'll change it up. We'll see. Uh, I mean, obviously, I have to put it up because it's going to be bo blocking my field of view. 
This is another cool thing that I was excited to, to walk away with is the Nezuko Tamagotchi. This one's imported from Japan. Um, I was very happy to get this because it was on my Amazon w wish list for a while. It was like $40, $50. But I was able to get it directly from the Tamagotchi booth for $20. So very happy about this. Eventually going to actually like use it, um, keep it handy. I really like this. Uh, you know, this is a very fun thing to have. I'm like running out of desk space all over my all over my room. Like I said, this is a, I've been a mess. Um, it, it is what it is. Um, so and then the uh, Tamashi Nations booth was selling this as a kind of like uh, like a release, like they just release it. But it's Anya Forger from Spy X Family. I saw this figure and said I definitely have to have this. I will not be setting this up right now because this you know. Every time I work with, like, figure arts, I always have to, like, sit down and actually, like, you know, build them. I'm not going to do it this stream. You know, maybe the next time you guys see me, it'll be set up. Oh, there's this uh, notepad, the Yu-Gi-Oh! notepad I was telling you guys about. So that's really cool because you can kind of measure your um, your life points on it. So it was, like, really cool uh, to, to have and to own. Eric got one of these uh, of these as well. Um, this one is really cool. I got I have one of these. I've showed you guys this. I have the Miku, the one that does like the head like that. They actually did have they have a bunch of them now, but this one was a con exclusive. It's the Ryoko Matoi um, from Hello Smile for, with the Berser the Berserk version of. Um, of Ryoko and it was a con exclusive so I said I have to get this now I have to do this at, this was at the good smile booth um, I did actually meet somebody there too he was really cool uh, his name is Edgar um, he's this he helps to run the socials for um, for good smile and like I said very cool dude um, we talked to cameras and you know he followed me on on socials and I followed him so, you know, happy to say we'll probably stay connected. Um, maybe we'll be able to do some more events in, uh, with Good Smile or something like that. That was another thing. We were able to actually meet some cool clients. I do have to get back to them at some point to the, uh, this week to just tell them, like, thank you for allowing us to, like, or thank you for, for your, your time. Um, so there's that. <laughs> oh, that that sucks. But I will say though, guys, I'm exhausted. I'm still exhausted. I'm still trying to rest up. Like, I finally have a, a be some better sleep today, and my body feels better. But at the same time, it's like I I want to rest forever. <laughs> like, I'm just like this week is is probably a good week for me to catch up on life, and I should probably use it to also clean my room up. Um, and just get back into the swing of things. Um, but we all know how, how that sort of thing goes. It never works out. Um, but, you know, we were able to, you know, we'll, we'll be able to clean up everything hopefully this week is my hope. Um, I think I have a dentist appointment on Thursday. Um, I don't think we're actually doing anything crazy that day. Uh, I think I'm just going in to take a look because my wisdom teeth have been bothering me. Um, and I know I was supposed to, like, kind of get them out, but, like, not really. So we'll see what happens. Anyways, here it is. This one, I, it's easy for me to, like, set up because it's just one, one thing. So they'll be right next to each other. I put them right next to each other. The Miku one and the, um, and the, uh, Ryoko one. I wanted it because it was a con exclusive. I did like Kill a Kill a lot. I had a bunch of Kill a Kill posters in my room uh, back in college. Um, I got a really cool eBay bag. I don't want to bring it out because it's huge and I don't want to refold it. So just believe me, there's a big eBay bag in here. Oh, yeah, here's another cool thing. I told you guys that we did actually go to see the Mario trailer live, and Jack Black was there, which is really cool. They d we got each shirt. Uh, this is a size large. 
and these were only given at New York Comic Con, so I will absolutely be keeping this for the time. Um, but it's a very cool shirt. Really enjoyed it. Um, I think that's pretty much it, for the most part. I have this cool one-piece bandana from the film. I, this this place is a mess, uh, and I keep saying that, but like, I don't know how I'm gonna how I'm gonna survive um, this week. I might just start cleaning it tonight after stream, because I can't I can't do this. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure if I shake violently, Miku's gonna fall. But I do like Sakura Miku a lot more. But that was pretty much my Comic Con. It was a very fun time. Um, I had a really great time. It was it's always just such a good good experience really cool people we got to work with our our friends from copper coast we met our friends from valiza uh valiza uh we met uh hypeland folks again which was really cool i was interviewed as bob the builder by Ki uh by kira please um go check out her content she's huge uh she's a huge streamer and i mean she's a huge content creator so i, I didn't even know that that was her um, like, I was just, like, like, I was just doing the interview, and then all of a sudden, like, after, after I decide to look her up, and I'm like, wait a minute, is that, is that her? And I'm like, she follows all of the, my, like, favorite, like, content creators, and they follow her back, and I'm like, oh my god, how did I not just, like, how did I not just, like, decide, let me take a photo, I mean, I did do the video, so you know what, good enough. I'm sure Eddie took took a bunch of, of photos and shit, so that was really cool. Um, so we did get her. I, like I said, I did meet Edgar. He was really cool to talk to. Um, he's from the West Coast, so it's good to have a contact in the West Coast. Uh, so because I don't have contacts in the West Coast, they're all like on the East Coast here. Uh, we met with Equilibrium Urban Survival Gear. Uh, they're they're a backpack manufacturing company. Uh, like they do custom bat modular custom backpacks, but they were really cool to work with. And um, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, and we we at, while I was talking to the uh, Equilibrium dudes, uh, the in Equilibrium people, I actually met with Ram Dot Booth. Um, Russell from, from them, and he was really cool, uh, and I think we'll probably be able to do some work with him at some point in the future. He runs an anime merchandise booth, so that's really cool. Um, am I missing any, any, we, we talked with Senpai Squad, but they didn't have any cars, because they sent all their cars to TwitchCon, um, but there will be cars at Anime NYC, and I'm excited to, to actually cover the cars, um, that's gonna be fun. Um... I think that's really it you know I'm excited for where the company's going we got a lot of great photos a lot of great followers since then um, so safe to say that we'll be you know doing a lot a lot of uh, catching up so I I'm hoping and praying that as the photos start oh yeah I got this Jollibee shirt while I was there too I was like like didn't even talk about it but yes I got this cool Jollibee shirt while I was there um, yeah, that, I think that's really it. Oh, I talk, I didn't even talk about the, one of the biggest parts. Of, of, while we were waiting to get our final group photo with um, with Valeza, um, we were we were stopped by some some people who were running one of the booths, and they said, you know, thank you guys for doing all all that you do. Um, and they, you know, it was very cool to have, and they gave us this really cool, like, like art piece this acrylic art piece from demon slayer and there's tanjiro and nezuko down there like this is so pretty like it looks so nice i just want to put it like i'm i want to frame it and put it up like this is just so cool and you know thank you to that vendor thank you to him and thank you to Valeza for hooking us up with that as well um that you know they're just always it's always good to meet people that you know um and work with so it's all it's always good you know we got free fudge from from our friends at copper coast uh confections as well as always they treat us always really well um and they're always so nice 
All right, so without further ado, I think that's it for Comic-Con. I'm going to go use the bathroom really quickly, and then we'll come back, we'll watch some videos, and we'll play some games. See you in a bit. All right, we're back. Hey, hey. <laughs> I had to get some water, too. My throat's feeling a little raspy. Like I said, my voice hasn't really been able to recover yet, so it's going to be kind of shitty uh, the next few days. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started on the videos. I said we were going to watch some videos today uh, while I wait. Um, so we're going to be watching the... Uh, Inter Let me just check on something really quickly. All right, cool. We're all good on that end. Um, I do want to watch a couple of these. or just two of them. The Internet's Darkest Corners 2 and uh, YouTube. I think I put the Seattle Zombie Woman. Uh, so we'll go ahead and watch those. Um, but yeah, so like I said, we're going to be watching some creepy videos for this for this time over here. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's let's kind of just see what, how, how this goes. I'm gonna turn off the music. This is Nick, Cra Nick Crowley, by the way, if anyone's curious. There was no way to defend herself. She knew she had been caused. 
As in the hours prior to getting behind the wheel of the <coughs> car, 21-year-old Jayana Webb had consumed far too many drinks, causing her driving to become uncontrollable and erratic. Interesting. And after reaching speeds well over 100 miles per hour, Jeez. driving right past a pair of state troopers, Jayana was now pulled over on the I-95. I'm glad they pulled her over. There, she would be approached by officers Martin Mack and Brandon Siska. They look she fake. She sat one breathalyzer away from facing harsh legal action for her poor decision. But just as the officers began conversing with the intoxicated woman, their attention would soon be called elsewhere. As an urgent call was made to their radio, alerting them that a pedestrian had been wandering by foot on that very highway just a few miles ahead. Unaware at this point that Jayana was in fact inebriated, and assuming that the pedestrian was a far more pressing concern, the officer sprang into action and sped away into the night, allowing Jayana to leave freely and breathe the ultimate sigh of relief. Clearly she had dodged a bullet, but rather than being thankful that she had avoided certain and serious legal ramifications, the incident instead seemed to inflate her ego, as she immediately took to Twitter still parked on the side of the road, writing in a braggadocious manner, why the cop pull me they say I'm doing 110 in a 50. As strange of a response as this may have been, to narrowly avoiding a life-changing arrest, this was surprisingly on brand for Jayana, as between incessant posting about how much she loves to drink, she would also tweet, If you ask me, I'm the best drunk driver. No way, man. No way. I wouldn't this even brag about that. What the hell? Jayana, her normalized action, as she believed that she was fully capable of driving drunk, and also that she was actually good at it, which is not only incredibly frightening, but also far from the truth. Immediately after tweeting this message out, Jayana would again speed off into the night, no having way. gotten away with her drunk driving once more. Though ironically, just minutes later, she would again approach those very same officers that had just pulled her over, <laughs> as well as that very pedestrian they were trying to help. Only this time, there was a problem. What she was going far too fast. Oh no. It was impaired to the point that her reaction time was severely delayed. No way. She quickly began to swerve out of control. And by that point, there was no stopping. What happened? And in an instant, Jayana would careen her vehicle directly into officers Martin Mack and Brandon Siska, as well as that same pedestrian they were attempting to oh save, my God. striking all three at unimaginable speeds. As the car finally came to a stop, all three of the men lay motionless on the pavement. None of them were alive. Oh my god. With the only survivor of the incident being Jayana, the best drunk driver ever. If you don't stop That's control, crazy. Don't drink and drive, kids. That's that's the best the best piece of advice I could give you. Don't drink and drive. That shit's not worth it. March 30th, 2017. A disturbing video begins circulating across Twitter, showing a woman hanging out of a window, clinging on for dear life with one hand. Below her was seven stories of nothing, leading to concrete ground and metal. Oh certain God. death for anyone unfortunate enough to fall from that height. Understandably, the woman is crying and begging to be saved, yelling over and over again. Why are you just recording her? But what makes this story especially disturbing is the commentary in the background heard in response to these pleas. As the woman desperately clings to the window, another woman stands inches away holding her phone and recording. Yeah, dead ass. Why are they just ma leaving her to like hang there? Saying, oh crazy, come back. It's a chilling line knowing that one woman was clearly powerless and in dire need of help while the other woman just stands behind the camera, seeming completely unfazed by the gravity of the situation, that's fucking waiting crazy, for tragedy man. to strike. And that's exactly what would happen, as the lady soon loses her grip, causing her to plummet to the ground below. Moments later, the camera shows the woman as she lays there deathly oh still, seven stories below. 
It was an extremely shocking video, and one that immediately raised questions as to what exactly had led to this scenario. With millions viewing the video and sharing it across Twitter, in a desperate search for answers as the clip offered nothing else in the way of context. Initially, it was believed and even reported that the woman had done this as a way of taking her own life. And the woman behind the camera seemingly didn't believe that she would go through with it. That's Perhaps just horrible. not understanding that by that point, there was literally nothing the hanging woman could have done to pull herself back up. And due to this being the most prominent initial theory, many would walk away from this video believing that it was sadly yet another tragic suicide. However, there was something that still didn't sit right about this clip as the cold, callous way that the woman off-screen had spoken to this struggling woman just comes across as so... off-putting, leading some to believe that there had to be more to the story. Uh-huh. A notion that would turn out to be correct. Oh. Why? Upon the release of a series of local articles from Kuwait, it would be revealed that this hanging woman's name was actually Adish Sadiq, and what we are witnessing in this video actually isn't an attempted suicide, but rather... An attempted murder. What? At the time, Adish had moved from her home in Ethiopia to quote unquote work as a maid in Kuwait. And I say this because it would later be revealed that Adish had essentially been a slave to her employer. What? She had only fuck? been working for this particular boss for three days. But during this time, she had been held captive and was forbidden from leaving the building, making Adish essentially a prisoner or a slave which sadly is all too common of an occurrence in the area due to something called the Kafala system, which is way too complicated to fully dive into here. But on this particular day, Adish finally had enough, and she approached her boss telling her that she was quitting while demanding to be released, though it wasn't quite that simple, and her boss did not take kindly to this request. In response, Adish would be grabbed and thrown inside of the bathroom of what wow. appears to be some sort of apartment complex, with the room being located near the very top of the building. Once inside, her boss, a woman who to my knowledge has not been publicly named, would lock the door and begin shouting at Adish and proclaiming that she was going to kill her. Oh my god. No one would ever find out or even care for that matter, which was most certainly true given the unbalanced power dynamic in the area between employers and foreign workers. And knowing that the woman was in fact serious with her threats, and that if she were killed in that bathroom, no one would have known, Adish made the split-second decision to try and escape out the window, despite knowing that she would most likely not survive the fall. Oh, but at man. least this way, as slim as it may seem, she had a chance. Going out that window was purely an act of desperation, but to Adish it was the only way. And so she clambered out the window and prepared to plummet to the ground below. But not before her boss pulled out her cell phone to record the woman's final moments, while openly mocking her as she fell to the ground below. Jeez, this what the hell? the lack of assistance that the camera woman offered, and why she seemed to have such a smug attitude towards the helpless woman. Because she didn't care if Adish died, her life was meaningless to her if she wasn't her slave. That's horrible. To make this employer's That's behavior horrible. even more jarring, she would immediately upload the video to her very own Snapchat, where it would then be re-recorded and shared across the web. And when questioned about what exactly had happened, oh, oh, oh that's the bathroom, best, the first thing you think of when something like this is happening. I'm going to take a video of this person dying and share it on social media. That's horrible, man. People like that have a special place in hell. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Too, had it not been for the fact that Adish survived. Really. Upon falling to the ground below, Adisha's fall would be broken by a metal awning, which more than likely saved her life, wow. as miraculously she was able to physically walk away from the scene with merely a broken arm and a few other non-life-threatening injuries. Wow, really? She'd even go on to give an interview inside the hospital just a few <clears throat> days later, where she would reveal the truth behind this shocking video, wow. with this testimony leading to the arrest of her employer, who would ultimately receive just a few months of jail time. But still, it's crazy to me just how differently this story could have ended, and probably should have ended. As imagine if this video had never been recorded, and imagine if Adish hadn't survived that fall. I mean, the truth would have That's literally crazy. never been known. Which is such a scary and utterly depressing thought. 
Though thankfully, the story did have a happy ending, a phenomenon that is sadly all too rare when exploring the dark corners of the internet. Wow. If you've seen my videos before, then you know that the internet is a dark and dangerous place. It can be. Day and age where everything Let me guess, this is an ad read for NordVPN or Surfshark VPN. Which is why I highly recommend today's sponsor, Nord. I knew it! Nord I fucking knew it! That begins immediately they always start... With just a the internet is a dark and scary place. But, thanks to today's sponsor, NordVPN. <laughs> it just always does not fail. for up to six of your devices to be connected at a Time, regardless I'd love to be brand, sponsored by NordVPN though. Fastest VPN out there. On top of I don't the have Coke Zero VPN today, but I will say Coke Zero. I also still want to be sponsored, upgrade, so contact me. <laughs> ads and web trackers, while also automatically scanning URLs and detecting for malware. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, you can try it now, risk-free, with a 30-day money-back guarantee by going to NordVPN.com/Crowley, where you'll also receive a huge discount on a two-year plan along with four months completely. Free. That's NordVPN.com slash Crowley. If we miss a step in the rigging process, things could go seriously wrong. The first step to preventing accidents is preparation. Let's begin by taking a close look at... Okay. Horrifying. In recent years, the popularity of live streaming has seemingly reached an all-time high. Oh, look, look what we're doing. It allows the audience to interact with their favorite creators in Hello, a chat. Really intimate way. Good to but see you. With content like this, there always lies a dark side, as unpredictable events can interrupt the live stream at any moment. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, no this has led to countless compilations and clips throughout the web, documenting the many disturbing moments that have happened when You guys remember when Facebook live, live streams were a huge these thing? Examples, a I don't really see it that much me. anymore. In the year 2021, a 23-year-old named Chao Quimi had been building a following on the social media site Douyin, the Chinese version of what many of us know today as TikTok, which will actually be featured in the remainder of today's cases. She would post numerous videos and live streams, helping build her follower account to over 100,000 wow. people. Wow. I mean, that's not a lot in, like, in the grand retrospect the of things, but like 100,000, that's still a lot. We have only 27, so 27 versus 100,000, that's a lot, so. But before she could get there, she knew that she had to keep a stable job and establish some sort of income, as she was already in the process of building her family, being the mother of two young children. And so she would spend her days working as a crane operator, assisting in numerous construction projects and earning herself a decent wage, as it wasn't a job that most would sign up for. The cranes that Chow was often tasked with operating often stood buildings, hundreds right? and even yeah. thousands of feet in the air. It certainly I don't want to know where this is going. Heart, but Chow seemingly embraced the challenge and in many ways used her unique skill set to her advantage, as she would often document her life as a crane operator on Douyin, with these videos, along with her dancing content, being responsible for the majority of her viewership. And by the summer of 2021, Chow would begin not only making videos while at work, but she would also begin live streaming right from her job. And on July 20th, 2021, when her workday began to wind down, she would once again fire up her stream. The full version of this stream doesn't appear to be available anywhere online today. And rather, we only have a roughly two minute clip from that day, with the video starting in silence, as Chow had been singing along to copyrighted music while inside the small cab of her massive crane, sitting 160 feet in the air. She would then set her phone down with the camera still rolling as the viewers began flocking to the stream, loving every second of it. Or at least they were, until the footage cut to this.
Though the exact moment has been cut from this video, likely out of respect for Chao, as she was streaming 16 stories in the sky, Chao finishes dancing and begins to walk down the steps of the crane, until she slips, causing her to free fall all the way to the ground with her phone supposedly still in hand. On her way down, she seems to strike metal bar after metal bar oh my God. until she finally hit the ground below, well, killing her instantly with yeah. the phone still recording. Oh no! I just can't even imagine being one of the viewers in that live stream and watching that very moment that she begins to fall. And ultimately, I think it's a good thing that the actual footage of her slipping has essentially been wiped from the internet. As even with the missing yeah, frames, this is truly one of crazy. the most disturbing live stream accidents that I have ever seen. An accident that showcased the brutal end of a rising star taken too soon. And throughout the history of the Douyin platform, she's far from the only one. See? It's not so hard after all. Once you get the hang of it, it can be easy to rig a load safely. Raid hunts bugs down like Vado. Man, that's fucking horrible. And kills them Blood's dead. last stream. Lu Chao Mao Mao Z oh, was also a Lu. young creator on the Dolby site, I thought I said Lud. I'm like, Ludwig's still alive! On the latest fashion trends, with her videos helping her to amass a following of over 600,000 people. Again, a lot of followers compared to what we have, so, platform. a lot. It's a type of virality that so many people in our world desire. But this also comes with a downside. With so many eyes on you, the criticism and hatred lobbied your way on a daily basis is often overwhelming, and for many, it can be too much to bear. And for Lou, this fame ultimately came at the cost of her own mental sanity. Even before her rise to prominence, Lou had long since struggled with severe depression. And now, Damn. given the rise of what her family described as constant online harassment, this depression would only worsen by the day. By August of 2021, things had gotten so bad for Lou that her family began to fear that she may try and harm herself and decided to place her in a psychiatric hospital with the hopes that there, she would be safe and hopefully overcome her personal demons. And for a while, that's exactly what she would do, as she supposedly began making serious strides in her mental health. Though once released, her progress would again diminish, as she would fall back into creating content, with the online harassment only growing worse and worse the more her account grew. Which leads us to October 14th, 2021. On top of dealing with the stress associated with online fame, Lou would also have to deal with a breakup between her and her longtime boyfriend, something that would cause her already collapsing mental health to completely plummet. And so, that day, she would take to Douyin and post a cryptic video stating that this may be the last time she ever interacts with her audience. Oh with the clip God. being titled, This is probably the last video. Thank you for following along. <laughs> My alt account? That's crazy. It is an incredibly worrisome video, as given her complex history with depression, viewers grew worried that she was alluding to taking her own life, with some questioning what she had in store for this supposed live stream, or if it would even happen at all. But sure enough, as promised, that same night Lou would go live and reveal her plan. As the stream starts, Lou is sitting in front of a camera, echoing the sentiment of her previous video, and expressing how truly sad she was, before she shifted the conversation to ending her life. As viewers began clicking on her stream, Lou explains how she had purchased liquid pesticide from the store, which was said to be highly toxic, as a single sip was capable of causing death. Oh my god. And not only did she buy this, but she also explained how she planned to drink it right there on stream before asking her viewers what they thought. By this point, her stream had already amassed over 1,200 viewers, many of whom being supposed fans of the young woman, who clearly was in desperate need of help. But rather than helping talk her out of this, no way. the live chat instead began to turn on her. Looking at still images pulled from the stream, the majority of her comments read things like drink, 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 or drink if you want to, 
And even more nefariously, other users would write, Drink up, fatty, and prove that you have depression in front of this many people. Oh my Drink god! These it's people are horrible! Whose true intentions were when starting this stream, but many believe that this was simply done as a call for help, with one of her own friends even stating that this was only done as a way of attracting her ex-boyfriend's attention, and that she never actually intended on taking her own life. But seeing the way that her chat had turned on her, and hearing the demands that she drink the pesticide, only fueled her spiraling mental health. Oh my god. And so, in an instant, Lou grabbed the bottle and began to chug. Yeah, this, I, I imagine Lou puts you the jug down and makes a remark stating that. that was hard to drink. Before the poison seemingly begins to take effect, the stream then ends as Lou clutches her throat and stops the video. With the live stream over, Lou immediately began to regret her decision, as she would quickly grab her phone and call an ambulance. However, it was much too late. Yeah. And sadly, she would lose her life, thanks in large part to the encouragement from her very own audience. Oh my god. It's a People horrible, are horrible story, but somehow People are horrible. it actually gets darker from here, as it actually has one of the most shocking twists that I have personally ever seen in a case before. Shocking twists like what? Following her passing, Lou's body would be quickly cremated with a funeral plan shortly after, so her loved ones could pay their respects. Though something strange happened before the ceremony could commence, as the ashes of Lou would disappear no fucking way apparently the crematorium had refused to turn over lou's ashes to her family claiming that somehow they had gotten lost though in actuality an investigation would reveal that these remains had actually been stolen and stolen by, by none other than the employees responsible for her cremation According to reports, really? numerous members of the staff had taken the remains of Lou with the intention of selling them on the block. Oh, uh, you guys suck! Passing, you guys are horrible! Was contacted by an individual expressing interest in purchasing her cremated remains. Oh my god. And what did this man have planned once in possession of these ashes? Well, he wanted to marry them. In certain areas of China, there exists a practice called what? ghost marriages, where people are allowed to marry after death. This is done due to the fact that unmarried girls are seen as undesirable in their society, and can even be shameful for the parents, so some will choose to marry the deceased individuals as a way of supposedly saving their souls and their families from this shame. Nope! It's a bizarre tradition. Bizarre it indeed! It happens between people who, at the very least, knew each other. But it's especially twisted when it's done without any form of consent yeah. from the victim or her family, as this man was a complete stranger to the girl. My god. Though thankfully, this plan would eventually fall through, Good. and the buyer supposedly backed out, and the operation would eventually be busted, leading to Lou's remains being found and safely returned to her family. And it's this family that I truly feel sorry for the most in the situation, as not only did they have to deal with the highly publicized passing of their daughter in such a horrific way, but also the theft and almost the marriage of her remains. That's so weird, man. Yeah. If, Let's turn like, now to China, where the Winter Olympics are underway yeah. in Beijing. China's human rights abuses are getting Father. as much attention as the athletes. Our final case once again takes us back to the Douyin app and a small impoverished village within Shuzhou, China. He really knows how to there, create a, a creepy atmosphere. Dong Moomin had been living with his family of eight children, seven boys and one girl. A dynamic that was extremely unusual to say the least as China had only just recently gotten rid of its one-child policy, yet somehow Dong had found a workaround and managed to grow this family all of his own. Even more surprising was the fact that Dong actually lived in destitute poverty, hardly earning enough to take care of himself, let alone this big family. Yet somehow he found a way for himself and his children to survive. And not just survive, but seemingly thrive, as Dong always seemed to have a smile on his face, and his family remained positive and full of joy despite their circumstances. To the locals, his story was incredibly touching, and soon enough, this story would begin to spread to the rest of the world, as Don began to document his life on Douyin, where he ran the aptly named Father of Eight page, which most would view as extremely inspirational, given his positive outlook and the love he had for his family. 
Soon enough, his videos began being viewed by thousands of people, growing his account to 600,000 followers in the span of just a few uploads. And before long, Dong had become a full-on small-town celebrity, with other influencers traveling to the region to interview him, as well as to help him set up ways for his audience to donate to his family. This exposure and outside help led to a brand new stream of income, as well as a seemingly endless supply of donations for his children, who would receive such a staggering amount of gifted clothes that it quite literally filled up an entire section of his already small home. Oh my god. The whole ordeal was undeniably touching, and among the many influencers to help make these donations happen was an account called Shujo Brother Yiksu, a man who had visited Dong and his family on multiple occasions. And and on one particular day in late January of 2021, he would once again show up unannounced to the home of Dong for another routine visit. And it was on this visit that everything changed. Oh no. Oh no. Upon being let into Dong's home, the man behind the Shujo Brother Yiksu account, who I'll now be referring to simply as Shujo, as I was unable to find his actual name, would begin interviewing one of Dong's many sons, who mentioned something unusual. Holding what appeared to be food in his hand, the child mentions how he and his brothers were often tasked with feeding their mother, who lived out back. This was a bizarre statement from a child, as after all of Shujo's visits, he had never once seen a mother figure. And up until this point, most had just assumed that she was out of the picture. And so, confused, Shujo asked the boy to take them to their mother, to which he was promptly led to a small hut behind the house, with his camera drawn. <laughs> Inside the dilapidated hut, Shujo would find a disheveled woman with a chain around her neck, attached to the wall and sealed what? by a padlock. The woman herself looked scared, frail, and was noticeably freezing, as that winter day when the video was filmed had been particularly cold. The woman was not only without a jacket, but without shoes, barefoot and shivering in the corner of the room. The majority of her words were barely discernible, as she seemed completely disconnected from the world around her, with wow. the only understandable statement she could manage to make being how she was kept there like a prostitute. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow, alright. In all the videos posted by and about Dong, this was the first time his wife, the mother of his children, was shown on camera. Immediately, the clip would spread across China, prompting concern for the chained woman, as given the optics alone, many fear that she may be a victim of human trafficking, and that Dong, this supposedly wholesome figure on the Douyin app, may have actually been using her for the sole purpose of bearing children. What the fuck? In response to the allegations, Dong came forward and admitted that the woman, whose surname was Yang, was in fact his wife, but that she suffered from debilitating mental health issues. And due to this, he claimed that Yang would often lose control and attempt to hurt those around her, including her children. And so, for their safety, she was kept chained up in a hut outside of the house. And this was a sentiment echoed by officials in the area, as a statement would quickly be made by law enforcement, stating, Her family has been given further assistance to ensure they have a warm Lunar New Year. Despite this quick response, however, the public largely doubted the story that Dong and the I don't know how they treat mental illness in, in validity, other parts the of the this world. Woman was being kept is clearly just especially in China. Inhumane. But I'm just really hoping, like, that would have been the better thing is to put her in a mental health hospital. For starters, just many being visit honest. The region to try and assist Yang and hopefully save her from this neglect only to discover that Chinese authorities had actually closed off the entire town in which Dong's family had lived, making access to them impossible. 
Along with this, journalists who had written about the incident were also supposedly arrested, along with the actual owner of the Shujo Brother Iksu account, and two other influencers who had attempted to help Yang. It seemed clear that China was attempting to fully censor this whole ordeal. I will say, by the way, not gonna lie, I'm not trying this to video was the, released the vibe, just days but Lamiku is still on top of the, the computer, and it, I'm actually kind of digging. Which just so happened to be taking place in China. But as hard as they tried to suppress this, the story of the chained woman had already spread far across the world, even on one day being mentioned across social media more so than the actual Olympics themselves. And in the face of intense international scrutiny, the truth would finally be revealed. In actuality, this lady's name isn't even Yang, and instead it was Chao Humami, and sadly, she had in fact been the victim of human trafficking. In 1996, when Chao was just 20 years old, she was taken to a mental health clinic where somehow she would end up being sold into a trafficking ring. From there, she was bought and sold on three separate occasions, with one of her buyers being Dong's father. Once purchased, Dong would marry the woman and essentially use her as a means of birthing children. It was within that backyard hut that Dong would often leave this starved and freezing woman, chained up like an animal, with no chance to leave, and only using her when it would come time to have another child. And as for her violent outbursts, well that too was a fabrication by Dong, as it would later be revealed that she was actually suffering from a seizure disorder, and each time she would have one, Dong would punish her by chaining her up, not because she was dangerous or anything like that, but because she was an inconvenience. The whole situation is unbelievably horrible, and truthfully, I can't even imagine the horrors that this poor woman has endured. And without this massive public pressure, it's likely she would have lived the rest of her life as a captive woman. Though thankfully, this doesn't appear to be the case, as it's believed that she has now finally been rescued and is being given the proper care that she deserved all along. While Dong and multiple others involved in her trafficking have since been arrested, leading to an extremely shocking and heinous end to a man once considered one of Douyin's most wholesome creators. Though there's one last element to this story, an element that totally takes away from this somewhat positive ending, with that being that Xiao wasn't the only captive woman in that village. Earlier I had mentioned that the Shujo Brother Yixu account had been banned with its owner having been arrested, and though this was primarily due to the expose on Dong, he would also release another video directly before his ban that showed that Xiao wasn't alone. In that very same small village, just a few houses down, Shujo would discover this. Unlike the chained woman story, this video would garner just a fraction of the attention, but is equally as alarming, as this woman, whose surname is Zong, had too been purchased many years ago by her now husband, and it seems that she is somehow treated even worse than Chao, as she had supposedly been beaten consistently throughout the early years of their relationship, leaving her too with severe mental issues, potentially caused by head trauma. And to make things even worse, she has lived like this on the floor of that hut on her knees, unable to walk or stand, for 20 years. Just left there to essentially waste away, unable to even move enough to make it to the bed that sits so tantalizingly close. There's just something so incredibly disturbing about this video in particular, and unfortunately I couldn't find any more information on it, with the only real detail being that the case was quote-unquote under investigation. But sadly, I have no idea what ended up happening to Zong since then. But I do hope that they are giving her the proper care and putting measures in place to protect any others like her and Chao, as given that these two cases happen so close to each other in one small village, I have a bad feeling that they aren't the only ones. 
I want to give a huge shout out to my god tier patron members Alexander Duran, America's Grumpy Uncle, Bazoo42, Biznacker, Bray, Karen S, Charles Robel, Daniel Binge, Donovan Aaron, Emmanuel Kadena, G, Game Gamer, Jake Parsons, JB Funk, J Money, John Stewart Muller, Catherine Ross, Lacey, Larry Matingley, Mark PH, Max, Mycrafty Ways, Nathan Backus, Phoenix Morgan, Sam Lutfi, Seralis, Scar77, Skelly, Sub to Micro O, Unblended Quarchnoi, William Berg, Zinsu Zensai, and Trucky Doggo. Returning to the state of Washington is always a new adventure for me. I want to share with you the sights and sounds of this beautiful northwest corner of our nation. May 5th. 2021. A disturbance is reported alongside a popular roadway in Seattle, Washington, drawing heavy police presence to the area. According to witnesses on the scene, a woman had been spotted limping down the street, wailing in agony, while holding an unknown object in her hand. The woman was acting incredibly erratic and appeared to be seriously injured, though despite this, it had apparently taken as many as eight police officers to subdue and restrain her. And this was far from the most chilling detail, with that being in the woman's appearance, as onlookers would go on to claim that there was something off about her face. It was unnatural, almost zombie-like. The story began as whispers among the community, with brief mentions being made across the web, though not many would take these posts seriously. As to outsiders, this seemed to be yet another internet hoax, or perhaps just some kind of extreme overreaction. But in reality, this was a very real scene that played out that evening, and one that was about to be put on display for the whole world to see, as the first video would quickly emerge, thrusting this case into an international spotlight and giving birth to an internet mystery known today as the Seattle Zombie Woman. Before we dive into this, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a brand new second channel called Crowley TV. And over there, I'm gonna be exploring some mysteries and conspiracy theories in person. Overall, the channel's gonna be a lot more fun and way less morbid than this channel over here, while also still exploring some of those dark and creepy themes. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I will leave a link in the description below, and make sure you turn those post notifications on if you wanna be alerted to my first upload. Thank you guys as always for your support, and I will see you over there. The video immediately took the world by storm, as it showed a woman with a ghostly pale face, with half her head shaven, as she limps across the street wearing only one shoe. And with each step she takes, she seems to yell in pain, before the video quickly cuts. In her hand appears to be the mysterious object, which the uploader of the video claimed to be a fanny pack. And disturbingly, it appeared to be soaked in blood, along with many other parts of the woman's body. In terms of context, there wasn't much, as despite the video going viral across the site, information on this individual dubbed the Seattle Zombie Woman was practically non-existent. According to the uploader, police had arrived and intervened just after the recording had stopped, in that it had taken a full team of officers to ultimately restrain her and eventually take her away, likely to get some form of treatment, though they admit that they weren't sure what happened from there or, just as importantly, what had led to this moment. Though interestingly enough, despite the fact that the answers were not emerging, other recordings certainly were. On the same day this now infamous TikTok was posted, another clip would be posted to YouTube by a separate user, seemingly showing a different angle of this same event, with this version being significantly longer. Here, we get a better angle of the woman's face, as it appears completely abnormal, with her eyes and lips appearing to be pitch black, which is a dramatic contrast to her pale complexion. All in all, she looks sickly and appears to be acting completely unhinged. Near her, multiple cops are seen attempting to calm her down, though she just continues walking and screaming. 
even escaping their grasp at the end of the video while continuing her erratic behavior. From there, it's assumed that the struggle continued before finally coming to an end sometime later, which was showcased in yet another video posted to TikTok. And it's in this clip where the mystery takes a far darker turn, as we can hear the lady say her first discernible words. The video shows the woman begging the officers not to take her to the hospital, pleading as if her life depended on it, and it only gets stranger and even more tragic as she begins pleading with them not to take her baby. This may seem like a random one-off comment, until you realize that the object in her hand had seemingly changed. Even though the footage is pretty hard to decipher, it seems as though that bloody fanny pack that she had been holding in the original clip was no longer in her possession, and instead, she appears to be holding something entirely different. This object has been the source of great speculation, as the blurry video makes it hard to definitively identify, though some, including myself, seem to think that it closely resembles a baby, and more specifically, the head of a baby. This was the last clip we would receive from the incident, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and overwhelming concern for the woman shown in the clips. Though despite the popularity of this case and all the questions put forth, the answers never came. Bizarrely, no official statement would be made by the Seattle PD, despite their officers being shown in this viral video. And on top of this, despite the story being picked up by a few news stations, no official conclusion or clarification would be brought forward. And given the lack of context and the lack of closure, this internet I didn't even know born, that my mic was off and the this entire time. Quickly spread Sorry, like I don't know how long that was off for. Right out of the gate, many users would be quick to call this story a fake. Believing that this was it's nothing, okay, nothing happened. Itself, I was just reacting due to, to it. The lack of reporting and also because of the woman's appearance, as given how unnatural she looked, many believe that she was simply wearing a heavy amount of makeup, with some calling her appearance and demeanor almost cartoonish. Plus, if we're being honest, TikTok is completely filled with fabricated stories just like this, leaving many set on this whole situation being fake. However, this actually isn't the case. One of the few updates we've gotten in this case came from the discovery of official police dispatch radio, which was found publicly available on a site known as Broadcastify. There, users would find audio from May 5th in the Seattle area that seemed to depict this exact incident, with the audio being just as chilling as the videos themselves. 300816 Avenue West. There's a female walking eastbound on West Barrett Street that has blood running down her face and leg. She's also yelling and limping. She's described as a white female, 20 to 30, 5'5 five, five to 5'7, five, thin build, with a shaved head and brown patches of hair, wearing a gray t-shirt, blue jeans, and one white shoe. 15th and West Armour Street on the uh, west side, just north of. The recording seems like an exact match to these videos, from the way the subject is described, all the way to that unmistakable screaming in the background. And this is undoubtedly from the Seattle PD. It came straight from their official police line, meaning that whatever this incident truly was, the police response to it was very real. This note also seems to disprove a long-standing theory that the clips were actually from the set of a movie being filmed in the area, as coincidentally, during this exact time period, there was a major film being produced in Seattle called Kimmy. On Monday, film crews were spotted in Westlake Center shooting a new HBO movie called Kimmy, which many had speculated that this was some kind of PR stunt from the project. 
But given the fact that this that's was a not, real police I don't response, think that's real. and that the film has actually since come out, with there being no mention of any zombies or any similar incidences within it, this is yet another debunked theory. Yeah. And while say. on the subject of debunked theories, I want to briefly mention what, at one point, had actually become the most popular theory surrounding this case, which is honestly incredibly offensive. And that is the claim that this woman was Marilyn Stanley, a woman who was brutally attacked by her ex-boyfriend and his dog, leading to devastating injuries. And because of her disfigurement, people pointed to her being the Seattle zombie woman, believing that this footage was taken just moments after her assault, However, despite so many people reporting this, it is incredibly easy to disprove, as the Maryland Stanley attack took place in Kentucky, not Seattle. Oh, the assault wow. happened all the way back in 2015, a full year before TikTok was even created, and a full six years be before this video was filmed. Um, this theory was never a bit dot, no, not and one Google search would Musical, have shown music that, but unfortunately Musical that Lee. didn't stop the speculation. And the outlandish theories continued from there, as some would quickly oh. fall off the deep end, believing that this woman truly was a real life zombie. The theory is obviously very ridiculous, yeah, but it was made bit. a bit more intriguing, as around the same time, there were reportedly similar occurrences emerging throughout the world of individuals looking and behaving in a similar manner. What the hell? I got my hair standing up now. To make things even more curious, this video soon began being removed and censored from both TikTok and her. YouTube, with only a few versions being left throughout the web. And adding this with the fact that there was no media coverage following this event and no police statements made to the public, despite the situation's virality, it left many convinced that this was there some form of That's a actually cool. cover. I like that. But ultimately, it's not hard to tell that this theory was just fear mongering. It's and just, at the uh, end of the day, it's a theory that is right highly here. unrealistic, though interesting to speculate. More logically, like it's that. been That's theorized better. that this lady had been in some sort of car accident as oh. she was shown walking alongside a fairly busy road and appeared to almost be in shock with her potentially having lost her baby in the wreck, adding to the trauma of the moment. But it seems completely unrealistic that if a child had passed away, there would have been no reports about it. I mean, surely this would have brought at least local media coverage, yeah. and it definitely would have been mentioned in the police blotter, which it wasn't. And given that no mention of a child was made on the official police recording at the scene, this idea, thankfully, has been ruled out, meaning that this object was likely something entirely different. Though even with this, it still leaves the car accident theory as a very real possibility, True. as it could explain why she was acting this way, along with her apparent injuries. Along with this possible explanation, there was another theory that I initially thought to be the most plausible, with that being that this was all the result of drugs and or severe mental illness, which would not only explain her behavior, but also the lack of official reporting, as a woman on drugs causing a scene is nothing all that noteworthy, especially in a major city. And as for her appearance, well, drugs can literally turn people into shells of themselves and make them completely unrecognizable. And her ragged and torn clothing could just be the result of potential homelessness, a fate that sadly befalls far too many people in our society yeah. who deal with these <clears throat> very struggles. Though with all this being said, landing on one definitive conclusion was unfortunately impossible based off the limited information available. And despite there being plausible theories put forth, a true answer seemed further away than ever, especially as the months began to pass. But even though the situation began to seem hopeless, a break would soon emerge out of nowhere in the Ooh. form of police body cam footage that would blow this case wide open. On March 9th, 2022, a YouTube account by the name of Rebecca MS would upload a video revealing her findings into the Seattle zombie woman mystery. As even though the world had seemingly forgotten about this bizarre case, Rebecca had taken it upon herself to find its true conclusion, which led her all the way to the discovery 
of this footage. Hey, ma'am! Hey, it's okay! You wanna tell us what's going on? Imitation moves. And it's makeup. The video shows the Seattle zombie woman incident from the perspective of the police on scene. And although this further proves that the response to this incident was in fact real, it also proves that the incident itself was not. Oh. As the first responders began to quickly realize that this lady wasn't even injured and she was instead wearing heavy theatrical makeup with fake blood, leaving the officers and bystanders just as confused as the rest confused. of us. Confused? What the heck is she doing? And the biggest revelation to come of all this was the discovery of this individual's true identity, with her real name being Kimberly Kasai, a revelation that would, in turn, lead to the discovery of her social media profiles, and ultimately the truth behind this internet mystery. Not long after the incident occurred, Kimberly would post this picture in full makeup, matching identically to the Seattle zombie woman, along with the caption, I am not your lab rat. She would then make a few other posts on Facebook, which revealed that she had carried out this whole stunt as a way to voice her opinions on certain political topics. Oh God, which I no way! Can't go more into here. But in the end, despite <sighs> the police and paramedic presence being very real, this whole woman, anti-vaxxer thing Seattle's that's crazy was simply acting. This is truly one of the strangest cases that I've seen. In ah! <laughs> People are so infuriating. So Yet in reality, this was nothing more than a bizarre publicity stunt. And in the end, it's obviously a good thing that none of these theories were true and that no one was injured as a result. Yeah, I'm glad they that everything was was good, you know. That actually arrived at a definitive and I guess somewhat satisfying conclusion. Yeah. Someone, I see. I want to give you a know, huge shout out to my god tier. Finished out, we finished the theory. You know, we know what happened, and that's it. The story's over. Yay! But man, that really fucking sucks. Um, okay. Give me one more second, guys. I'm, that was actually the last video here, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the bathroom one more time, and then we're gonna end some games. See you a bit. All right, so before we get into the games, uh, I did kind of want to give everyone an update on what's going on. Uh, so as you can tell, we're still it's still locked Spooktober, so we're still doing some scary stuff for the rest of this month. Um, so we'll try to stream as much as we can. Friday, we'll not be streaming uh, for f or Frightening Fridays, for Fall Guy Fridays, whatever, um, because I will be going to a concert. And at night, I will be babysitting, so... Uh, we won't be doing anything on that day. Uh, maybe Saturday, so we might be, like, Scary Saturday. Uh, so we'll see what happens. We will be streaming tomorrow. 
I forget. Uh, tomorrow is Witchcraft and Wizardry Wednesday. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> um, we're still going to be playing Phasmo, Dead by Daylight, Friday the 13th. But realistically, I need to find a party to play with. And so we'll see what happens. Um, I Like I said, I did buy the Fear Games. So we will be trying, out, trying those out. Um, let's see. Uh, I did, oh, I also have the Resi games, so maybe we'll play that either tomorrow or Thursday. We'll start playing those. Um, let's see. And then the 25th, which is a Tuesday, we are going to be out that day because I have the Charlie Puth concert that day, so we'll not be going, uh, streaming that day. We'll stream Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, Halloween, I'm going to see. I might be out that day, but... It'd be really cool if we could stream on Halloween. That'd be really fun. Um, but if not, we're going to be out doing some really cool stuff. Maybe take some pictures or something like that. Um, let's see. Um, on the 29th, which is a Saturday, so it doesn't really concern you guys. But I will be going to the Valeza Grand Opening, uh, which is going to be very fun. We're going to be covering their event. Uh, I'm excited to do that. Uh, let's see what happens. Um... But yeah, so the rest of the month we're just going to we'll play some Phasmo, maybe we'll play some Dead by Daylight, Friday the 13th. Um, you know, I, I, if, if people can convince me, I might be able to pull up FNAF 4 and play it. Um, and just whatever games, we, we have tons of games that we can play, uh, Observation Duty. Um, so, you know, like, we'll be able to, like, we'll be able to have some fun this, this month still. Uh, but yeah, so I am, ha I can't wait. Uh, let's see. So, but today I do just want to get back into Fortnite. I'll put on a scary skin and we'll just get back into it. Uh, so let's see. So we'll play some Fortnite. It's been a bit, so. Is stream elements working? You are working, okay. All right, let me go ahead and start up Fortnite. I'm sure there's an update that I have to uh, install or something like that. But yeah, Miku's just chilling. You can kind of see the top of her head, like right here. Uh, kind of right. Can you see my head, hand right there? Okay. I keep saying I'm going to get back into Genshin, but that has not happened as of yet. So realistically, I don't know when, but hopefully November, because it's going to be more of a chill month in terms of gaming. So we'll be back on the regular schedule. So we'll be able to play some Genshin that month. Um, but I w like, I'm very excited for what is to come for this month in, uh, for Genshin, honestly. All right. Awesome. My Harley is kind of a uh, a horror skin, but I'm not horror skin, but like she's like she's a skin. <laughs> she's a skin that kind of captures that vibe. But uh, let me see. What am I? What can I wear today? It'd be Deadpool, Ravenpool. Damn, do I just have none of the, the horror skins loaded up? Oh, a, for, a Frankenstein. Duh. Um, the Butter Barn theme. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what, what they got in the shop today. That's cool. Jacqueline Hyde. Very cool. I 
I did say I eventually want to get it. The, get that. Oh, gummy fish stick. That's a cool skin. Coachella? Is that the Coachella skins again? Or something? I know I did miss a couple of these. But I don't know which ones. But I do want to grab this one while we're here. Because I know I did want to grab it. Oh, Silk Sonic is back. I forgot. Yeah, J Balvin. We need to grab the X-23 bundle before it leaves, too. Um, that's fun. The trick-or-treat bundle. Melanie Lolly's bundle. That's cool. Where is the Saving the Beast bundle, though? <laughs> really? Realistically, is it, was it just there for one day or something? Damn. That's crazy. Alright, well. Safe to say. Yeah, you're right. Harley Harley is is a bad bitch. <laughs> um Alright. Let's see. Fortnite Mirrors starts on October 18th, so it's gonna be fun. But Let's see. I am only 28. I'm so behind on everything. And then, like, that's crazy because week four is about to start. So behind. I need to get back in the swing of things. So, so let's let's start getting some quests while out of the way, too. I'll do the dailies, but let's see. Hit opponent while sliding. That's not too hard. Deal damage within five seconds of mantling. Eliminate opponents while chromed. That's not too bad. Uh, five seconds of the player ship. All right. Well, clearly there's a lot of quests that we got to finish, but you know we got to get back into the swing of things here. <laughs> it's all right. It wasn't. It, it's not that far off. I'm gonna disable V-Sync, because I heard a lot of people saying V-Sync actually does kind of, like, screw you up. Oh, it is off already. Alright. Oh, there's a couple places on the map I haven't discovered again. Oh, no. Chrome Crossroads or whatever the fuck it's called. I really hope. Let's see what happens. changed Coney Island I know like damn I mean it doesn't look that far off but it's still like oh I forgot I had I gave him the ma the matrix skin but now it's a totally different place my god what is this chrome crossroads I didn't even need to know that that was what it was called I didn't even need to, like, make sure. Like, it was already very clear what it was. Right, the ranger shotgun's back, too. The fuck? Explosive goo gun, right. I forgot that that came out today. I'd like to try it out. Huh. 
Hello? I don't even know what the fuck happened there. Oh, that's Patrick Mahomes. Oh, my God. Well, he no longer exists. <laughs> Safe to say he no longer exists. All right, I need to change my settings. This is ridiculous. I forgot how to play Fortnite. It's been that long, guys. And I need to change this back to like, ugh. Actually the worst. Oh, let me just duck under here and change my settings because this is not happening. Alright. Uh, oh, it's at once. Why is it at 120? There we go. There we go. 60 frames is better than 120. Need a long shot. The oh, shield bubble's back, I forgot about that. Let's see. And these these settings are crazy now. Ah, oh, even after I uh, come on, I that was mine still. That was still mine. I love that this song starts playing after I fail. Oh, right, the Cobra DMR is out now. I gotta try it out. And the lag, the lag is killing me right now. Damn, my thing really didn't post right away. I didn't even know my story posted and didn't post right away. It's a very cool Miku figure, by the way. I don't know if you guys can see that. I was just looking and I saw it and it was like a really cool Miku fit. I was just scrolling. Very cool. She's like riding on the moon. I like that. That's very cool. Oh, 
know what's with this lag even on on here <laughs> there's a little slight lag here too on my uh, OBS but all right let's get back to it right, let's get here too oh there's some area right here at the end that I didn't, haven't been to yet Oh, a new chrome butter, chrome butter barn now? It's called the flutter barn. Fuck was that? This is somebody right there, but I do not have the ability. I was about to say, I'm like, whoa, what the fuck was that? Oh my god. Holy oh god, they brought the grapple girl. Bleh. They brought the grapple glove back. Thanks for grabbing the clip, man. Alright. Great, I've been set up for the rest of this, uh, the rest of this time, for the rest of this game. I'm really digging the the explosive shit, dude. That that's awesome. All right. They probably realized that having Spider Gwen in the same season as um, without the grapple glove was probably a mistake, so they had to bring it back. They probably made some changes to it. I think that's what happened. Oh, oh, there's a hunter bolt. I'll take that though. Was that at me? Were they coming to me? Was that directed at me? I'm sorry, I like I like this a little more than the hammer. Please forgive me, everybody. Alright, I'm gonna lay bring this down to like 30 frames because this is just not happening right now. Oh, it's still really bad. Which part of this is just not working with me right now? That's fine. Oh, of course. Now we can just bring up to 60. There we go. It looks like I'm playing on a PS1, but at least it's not ash. Like, it's more smooth. Ugh. It's still kind of shitty, but it's, like, not as bad. I think it's probably just all the, um, the shit that's going on underneath in the background.
there's a chest in there, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go there. If I'm not streaming, I'll absolutely play on uh, like 120 frames per second and whatnot. Alright, open sesame. I was about to say, I'm like, where is it supposed to enter? Open. Up. That looks fire, dude. Wait, that looks so cool. Alright, fine, fine. You've convinced me. You can't convince me further. Oh, right, the launch pads are back. Alright, is there anything in here I should take, though? I'm at best. Isn't that right? That's a good idea that I took the med mist stand, isn't it? Alright then. That is that is a that is awesome. I like this a lot. I'm taking the Cobra DMR a lot, actually. Oh, chromed vehicle coming up our way. Alright. I'm gonna just let it go, I guess. I don't even know what to do here in this case. Like, do I want to try doing something here? I also shouldn't be out in the open because of the whole, like... Because there are people like snipers. I tried it, man. I really did try it, though. <laughs> man, 
that Cobra DMR is fire, dude. No, the Spire brings me back all the way to Chapter 2, Season 5. That was right when I was, like, getting into it. And I said, I wanted all of the Raven skins, so I tried hard for them. gonna have to build a new nift here computer once I once I move dude like at least like 128 gigabytes of RAM I think I have 64 on this but on this baby right now well at least at least 128 cuz all my RAM is being taken up by by the fact that I'm streaming plus the game so all right, I'm gonna go to this area and the deep this this corner right here Rickety rocks. Why do they call it that? What's going on? So I have something with me. Is it taken over by Chrome or something already? Like, I'm wondering why this was blocked out. Why did I get a crown bonus? I didn't even- I don't even have a crown. can't do the ranger dude not anymore maybe like a long time ago Ooh, cobra dmr great thing to work with is that because the kame house no longer exists is that why we did this but the kame house either way was like here so like i don't understand i really don't And stream a little earlier uh, today. I think after we were we kind of exhausted ourselves playing Fortnite. It's only not even midnight yet, so we're doing pretty well.
there it is. There's that thing that we need a we need a key for, but I need to go find a key. Maybe there's a key in here. No key in here. Maybe a key in here. Did we come up here already? I feel like we did. Yeah. Okay, we did. Alright, we just move on. a flare ship again. Am I crazy? Shoot targets while zip lining. That's fucking crazy, man. Can't even do that. A marksman rifle. Wow. They want me to do damage with a DMR? At least 75 meters away? That's crazy. Not terrible, but crazy. I forgot what the flare ship is. Is that the one by the, um... Is this the flare ship? The, this one right here? Where'd the ship go? Um, I'm so confused. Where the hell is the ship? Oh, you guys can see the cracks there too. Interesting. Oh, what the hell happened there? Alright, well, I think we already talked to you, so. Is that the building for. Wait, is that no sweat insurance? What the hell is it doing here? Interesting that it's came all the way over here. I'm not liking this whole like we are gonna switch all of our buildings to being aerial because this kind of scares me in that we're the next season's going to be very aerial based. I hope not. Because the last time that happened we had the water season and I just literally didn't even play it.
I think that was chapter 2, season 4, if I remember correctly. Literally skipped that entire season. It sucks because Aquaman was a part of the battle pass, so... Goodbye. And I shall take this from you. Right as soon as he opens the thing, too. I'll take that. So, which means I didn't even need a key because I'm just gonna waltz right in. Thanks for the assist, buddy. I took this man's fucking. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's a Cobra DMR, but in legendary form. literally don't need much of this stuff actually so um all right let's move on why do i keep getting crown bonuses and i don't have a crown i mean i'm not complaining but like i'll take it I guess I'm going back up there. He's upstairs. up there. Whew. Now I actually have a victory crown. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. I can hear it underneath me, so I should probably just break the floor.
already opened that though. I really don't need to open it again. Whoa, that's not where I want to go. so close you're so weak oh no you're so weak all right chat i'm gonna do one more Bill, i'm so tired of covering so. So still feeling a little sick, so. To be clear, not sick with COVID. It's my teeth that are just dying right now, so. Oh, that's the ship. Okay, actually, I'm gonna go there. Er, but where's the pirate ship, though? Ugh, my arms are still in pain, man.
ever or not. Wait, 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 wait. You're in this whole damn town. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on down. Come on down to the butter bar. Come on down. Come on down to the butter barn. Such a good, good song. That's a tough call to make. Because I do need a fast shooting gun that's that can do some long range. So I think I'm going to just I'm gonna sacrifice that for now. Oh, I have to emo, right? Um, I forget how you emo here. Oh. There we go. Nice. the Shrek thing again. Oh, come on. That would have been so nice. Oh, the Scarecrows are, are here. You know what this means, guys. This is going to be one of the places for four nightmares. There's a maze. Probably some cube creatures. The scythe. Oh, that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Where is this person? was a thing that happened today. Oh, he got a blue chest, too. Alright, well, that was a thing that happened, and I am now leaving <laughs> for the day. Um, alright. Today was a good stream. Three hours still. Managed to get three hours of stream in there. Um, alright, everybody. That was fun. Uh, we are gonna be streaming again tomorrow, like I said. Uh, unless I've been taken over by illness or something like that. Um, but, you know, as always, this is, it's a fun time to hang out with you guys. Um, let me see. Let's see, who are we going to raid today? Let's see who's online. 